DNA is that molecular heredity that makes up our genes, our chromosomes. You know, it has all the information that builds a dog or a cat or an elephant, a human being. And you know, it's interesting. DNA was discovered by two famous scientists in England, uh, Francis Crick and James Wat Watson. They were both atheists, and they discovered the helical structure of DNA back in 1953. Actually, I, I'm, I'm really pleased it was 1953 because I don't know what it is, but I, I always have troubles remembering birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. And so when I, whenever I hear it announced on the news, it's, it's Pearl Harbor Day is coming up. Pearl Harbor Day, 7th of December. That's right. That was when my wife was born. So now I remember her birthday, 7th of December. And then I think, now, how old is she? And then I think, now, when did Watson and Crick discover the helical structure of DNA? 1953. That's right, she was born in 1953. So that's how I remember my wife's birthday. Uh, just give you, you know, some ideas out there if you're interested. All right, so Watson and Crick, when they discovered the helical structure of DNA, they put together this model. In fact, this is the original model that they put together. It's in a museum in London. And you know what they announced to the world? They said, guess what we found? There's no God. They said, as atheists, what they set out to do was to show that life is built on chemistry. Chemistry is just matter, that there is no God. This is the molecule of life. This is what makes life DNA. There's no God. It's just a just molecule. Complex molecule is just a molecule. Well, you know what's interesting? We've done a lot of research since then. And you know what we found? DNA is not just matter. You know what DNA is? It's actually a complex information system and a language system. See, to help us understand, here's a piece of rope that has red and blue beads on the rope. And those red and blue beads spell out the word help. You all agree with that? Not sure? If you know the Morse code, they spell out the word help. If you don't know the Morse code, you have red and blue beads on a rope. <laughs> OK? So in a sense, you think about it, we could write the entire Bible on a piece of rope using those beads, if you know the Morse code. It'd be a long piece of rope, but you could actually do it. But that's what I want you to understand, is that the beads, the beads, when they're arranged into a particular order and you know the language, you can get the information that's there, the word help. But you've got to have the information and you've got to have the language to read it. DNA is sort of like that. As an analogy, DNA is like a couple of pieces of rope and has these beads on it, these molecules, base pairs. You don't have to worry too much about that. And they spell out all the information on how to build a human being, how to make your heart and your brain and your kidneys, all the engineering diagrams, uh, all of the biochemistry, all the chemical pathways. Incredibly complex. It's, it's like a whole library of books with all this information in them. And you know, it's interesting. When I went to university, my professor did an experiment. He said, look, I'm going to show you that there's no God and that life could arise by natural processes. He said, let's take the letters of the alphabet and put them in a hat. One of the things I didn't ask is, where did the letters come from? But we'll ignore that. OK, so we put them in a hat. And then he passed the hat around the class and said, I want you by chance to pull out letters. And three students in a row pulled out B-A-T. Ah, we got a word, bat. Given enough time, we could get more words. Given enough time, we could actually think about it, even though it seems remote, but you could get sentences. Given enough time, you could get the Encyclopedia Britannica. See, uh, you don't need God. It just so happened that millions of years ago, in just, just the right conditions, at the right time, the right molecules came together, DNA, life, bang, it all evolved. There's no God. You know what I d didn't ask my professor at the time? That word B-A-T, is it a B-A-T to... Uh, a Dutchman, or a, or a Chinese, or a Japanese, or who's, who's that a word to? You realize it's only a word to somebody who has a language? See, if you look at my, my Bible here, it's in English. But if this Bible was in Russian, I wouldn't be able to read it, because I don't know Russian. It needs to be in English, and I need to know the English language to read this. Okay? You know the other interesting thing is that I can read this and get information, but the information is really not on the page. Actually, the information comes because there's ink arranged into letters that are arranged into words that are arranged into sentences. And because I have the language, I can read that and get the information. But actually, information is immaterial. See? This is getting heavy. All right? 
So what I want us to understand is this. You can't read the word help without the language. Actually, DNA is like that. Do you realize that DNA is like all this information, but you know what else? You've got to have the language to read DNA. So DNA itself has the information to make the language to read the DNA. It's all got to be there or it won't work. Now, Dr. Werner Gitt, who's a German scientist, he wrote a book called In the Beginning Was Information. And in that book, he says this, there is no natural law through which matter can give rise to information. Now, stop right there for a moment. Life is built on information. Do you know how many bits of information there are in living things on this earth? It's not millions. It's not billions. It's zillions. I mean, it is, it is uncountable for us. The amount of information in DNA on living things on this earth is absolutely extraordinary. Do you know what Dr. Gitt is saying? There's not one instance where matter has ever produced one bit of information by itself. Wait a minute. According to evolution, matter had to produce information over millions of years. You've got to get all this new information to get the zillions of bits of information we have so that you can get all these new features and creatures and all the rest of it. Well, wait a minute. We've never seen matter produce one bit of information? That, that means life could not have arisen by natural processes. Not only that, he goes on and says this, a code system is always the result of a mental process. Matter by itself never produces a code. You know, if you, if you do computer programming, if you have random events on your code to disrupt the code, it destroys it. And if you just try to generate a code by random processes, it isn't going to work. You have to have a language to make it work. And so you see, when you think about it, what evolutionists believe, they don't just believe that one kind of animal changed into another. They have to believe that matter produces information and that originally matter produced information and a language system to form life. And over millions of years, you produce more and more information to get the zillions of bits of information. People, you know, you know what this really says? Evolution is ridiculous. It's absurd. Now, what do the Bible says? If you don't believe in God, you're without excuse. DNA actually cries out to us, in the beginning God created. 